More Trucks TV with you over here. Uh, today we're honored to have uh, Mr. Muhammad Al Hassan, who is the karting champion of the Bahrain Rotex Max 2024 Championship. So, without further ado, Muhammad, how are you? I'm happy to be here. What's it like being a champion? Yeah, it feels good. It's been a it's been a big goal, and I've been working towards it for quite a long time. So I'm very happy to have achieved this. So. We need to understand. We need to, we need to let the public know who you are, and uh, how you came to be. I mean, how old are you? Fifteen years old. Fifteen years old, and you're already a champion. Um, so, how long have you been doing this? Four years now. I started at the age of eleven. And um, how has it progressed? I mean, you started, of of course, here in Bahrain at the Bahrain International Karting Circuit. That's correct. By the way, I love that circuit. I think it's one of the best circuits we have in the world, but I'm not a go-karting expert as you are, so give me your opinion of that circuit. Yeah, I agree. The The infrastructure is really well built. In my opinion, it's the best track in the world. Now, this means a lot coming from you because you've raced in other karting circuits around the world. Where have you raced? So I've raced at many race circuits in the UAE and Italy, including Rack Track, Al Ain and Al Fersan. And in Italy, I've raced in Sarno. Uh, Pista Azuro, Yasulo, and then Lonato. From all those circuits, you're telling me that the one that we have here in Bahrain is something to be really proud of and actually uh, in the top lean when it comes to... Uh, is this an idea that's shared by most karting uh, carters or is this something because you're, you know, you're Bahraini and a little bit biased and loyal to the country? No, I mean, for sure I'm going to be a bit biased towards the country, but I really think it's a great track and it's hosted the world finals a couple of times. And many other drivers agree and say it's the best. I, I also agree. I, I think I think it's the best. I also think, I mean, in my opinion, I also think the the uh, the team that's involved in uh, organizing and managing, uh, be it from the stewards to the actual club members to the people who are actually coordinated, I know them and I know that they're very, very good. I mean, they're, 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 we host a Formula One race in Bahrain. Uh, so all these carters, and that karting club, they also learn from the marshals. They're part of the marshals, and they also learn from the ones that are organizing the F1. So I can, I've, I've been to a couple, actually I've been to a couple and I've seen you racing as well. And I noticed that a lot of the people there, a lot of the organizers, uh, the stewards and, and the organizers there, are using the same style and the same ideas and the same uh, methods that they do when they're actually running a Formula One uh, team. And I actually asked a couple of the guys there, like, why are you so strict? Why are you so harsh? And they tell me that it's it's actually we need to make things safe for everybody, but more importantly, we need to teach these future Formula One drivers how the system works. Uh, what's what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I agree. They're doing a really good job. I have to thank uh, all the officials, the marshals, the stewards, the scrutineers. They've been doing a really good job to put on the season, and yeah, they're they're very professional. Sometimes maybe too professional, but. Yeah, they teach us a lot and prepare us for races outside of Bahrain. So th tell us about this championship. This championship, uh, the, the whole, how many races were they? It was eight rounds. Eight rounds. And all the eight rounds were here in Bahrain? And how many teams participated? Five teams. Five teams. And and how many race drivers in, in total? In total, in my category, there was 30 drivers. What's the name? Of, what's, the, what's your category called? Senior Max. Senior Max. So this, so you're racing with people who are twice your age, in fact, if not more. 14 plus. So. So even like you know, 50 year olds can participate in this, and, or is it? Is there a cap? And yeah, if you wanted to, you could. If you make the weight. <laughs> ah, see, the weight. That's something else. Maybe the age I can get away with it, but the weight, that's not going to be easy. So you're. You said 20, 22. How many? How many? Just 30 in total. 30 in total. Throughout the championship. And the oldest person that was there, what age? We were, I just want to get an understanding of who you were racing against. Oldest one was, I think, 25 or maybe 27. Okay. Um, I'm not too sure. And the youngest was? Youngest was uh, 14. 14. Yes. And um, so, I mean, if you're 26 years old and you're, and you're racing in a championship, you they have a little bit more advantage than you because they have the experience of they race they race more wouldn't you say so 
yeah, for sure, they're going to have a lot more experience, but you know, it didn't phase us. I mean, it's pretty, I have to tell you, it's pretty impressive because uh, usually from my understanding in Bahrain, our championships are usually like five carters together, maybe six, sometimes four, you know, maximum seven uh, participants. So uh, coming in, uh, on the podium, like winning the first or second or third position out of, say, five people, it's impressive, it's good, but it's out of five people. And, um, uh, and usually it's limited with, with the age group that you're in. But somehow you, for the, and this is, the, I think, the first time ever in Bahrain, we had a grid of about 30 carters. So this is the first time that we had a full, if not beyond full, uh, carting grid of 30 carters. And among all the 30, you came first in that championship. So, so there, there are so many things to be proud and happy about, um, such as winning the championship, um, for the first time beating 30 people. It's not like you know five or six people. Um, also, you're beating people twice your age. Um, this is quite an achievement, which is actually why we wanted you to be here. Um, because there are people that win karting championships uh, every year. But for us here in Bahrain, and you know, a Bahraini person such as yourself, this is the first time we've had in Bahrain history a grid of that many numbers of karting uh, professionals uh, and a championship professional um, and, uh, and a, 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 an age from 14 to plus. And, uh, you know, all I can say is, is, is well done, Hamoudi. That, that really is impressive. It's so impressive that I wanted you to be here personally and I wanted to find out how did you do it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have to say uh, the growth over the last couple of years in courting has been very good, and especially in certain categories. This year was the biggest uh, grid of drivers that there has ever been in Bahrain. So I'm very proud to say that uh, courting and motorsport in Bahrain is growing very well. Now, uh, the ones, that, the 30 members, they were all Bahrainis or they were people from all over the world? No, there's quite a few nationalities. Uh, some port British and Bahraini, some from the US, uh, some from Kuwait, some from uh, Qatar. So, uh, so these are people that live in different countries and have come just to participate in this championship in order to have, you know, to get a trophy or to have it in their racing portfolio as a championship that they participated in and hopefully uh, won. But that, so that's, so it's not just for the locals here in Bahrain. It's not just for Bahrainis or for people that, that are in Bahrain. It's actually a, a championship that's open for anybody of that age group that's willing to come and participate. Yeah, yeah, it's a local championship, but a few drivers come from outside to race. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, when does the next season start? Next season starts in, I believe, October or November. And uh, what kind of, um, how are you going to practice for that one? I mean, what, what are you going to be doing? Are you, you going to be traveling in the summer or are you going to be pretty much stuck here in Bahrain trying to figure out? No, no, we, we have a, we we're making a plan for the summer. We're planning on doing quite a lot of races to get us prepared for not only the next season, but also there's a world, world championship coming up in Italy. So it's the champion from every country that they get together and they do one big race. So that's going to be held in October in Italy. Is it just one race? Yeah, it's one race. And how many champions are going to be there? 72. Okay. And then only 36 are going to make the final. And then that's one final race. Okay, okay, okay. And again, it, the, it's an open age group? Yeah, it's 14 plus for the category I'm racing. 14 plus. Now, this is the first time you race in a 14 plus uh, category? This year, yeah. It's my rookie season in senior. So as a rookie, first time and you win the championship. Yeah, that's great. First of all, what's the name of your team? You're part of a team, right? Yeah. What's the name of the team? Praga. And uh, how many members are in that team? Right now, it's about nine drivers, I believe. Those nine drivers all drive in that same category, or they're different ages and drive in different categories? No, there's about four in that category, including me. And there's two in mini, uh, one in micro, one in junior. Now, uh, for the people listening to you, how important is it? I mean, are there any characters that are not part of a team? They're just individually coming by themselves and partaking in their own self-made team? Yeah, yeah. Some drivers, they bring a mechanic and they just race and they're their own entrance. So what's the advantage of being part of a team? Being part of the team is uh, you get to drive with other drivers. You get to compare yourself between them. You push each other forward. And yeah, it's a very good, it's like a family kind of. And there's really good coaches who have lots of experience. The mechanics are very good also. So we all push each other forward. 
Now, of course, this costs money, right? It's not something that they come tell you come. It's more, it's like both of you, you have to be asked and you have to ask them, uh, but you also pay for these uh, these things. Can you give us a rough idea of what, what kind of, uh, if somebody's interested in this, what are they looking at in terms of paying annually to partake and participate as a team member? So if you're just starting out and you're looking to participate in the local championship, it could be anywhere from two to 10,000 a year. Okay, okay. And they provide you with the cards, or is it something that's something you have to buy yourself? Yeah, they provide you with everything. Okay. And you've been doing this, as you said, for about four or five years? Four or five years. Do you have any sponsors, other than your dad? Not yet. <laughs> this is my dad. Well, that's the most important sponsor, actually. Yeah, yeah. Do any other team members have any sponsors? Some teams are sponsored, but as of drivers, as of drivers, I don't think. If somebody wants to watch what you're doing, can they see it on Bahrain TV? Is it on any other channel or do they have to personally be there and, and watch? Right now, the races are not live streamed, uh, but spectators are allowed at free of costs. So they can just look on the Instagram. It shows the dates for all of the races and they can just go to the races that they want to go to. Do you get a lot, a lot of spectators or is, is, or if it's an important ev uh, race or how does it work with, in terms of spectators? Yeah, we get a good amount of spectators, most of them family though. But I, I do see sometimes people up in the stands that just he come here because they like it and it's entertaining. So w what do you do when you're not karting? When I'm not karting? Yeah, uh, I like to spend time with my friends. I go to them. I enjoy paddle, playing paddle. I enjoy football, basketball. And I also go to the gym to keep myself fit and prepared for all the races. So that actually, the, the gym part, I would think it's a necessity. It's a requirement in order for you to endure. Like, how long are those races? 15, 16 laps. So about 15 minutes, let's say. 15 minutes. And, and that's per day or that's per race and sometimes more than one race? It's per race. So in a whole day, you're probably driving for around, I don't know, on a race day, if it's one race, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Where do you see yourself in four years' time? In four years' time, I either see myself uh, racing professionally, professionally and being self-sustained or in college? Well, actually both. Um, I think college is something you should be doing regardless uh, just to, you know, uh, be educated and well-informed and, and capable even as a racer, a professional racer. Um, but I'm talking about like beyond karting. So after karting, the usual route is to go to Formula 4 and there's many championships. There's a new one in Saudi that just started this year. There's one in the UAE. There's regional championships and there's championships in Europe, Spain, uh, Britain as well. So usually the route is after courting to go to F4. And then from F4? From F4 to be F3, and then you could go F2 and then F1, or you could uh, move to other series, maybe endurance championships or Porsche Cups. Okay, what's what's your dream? My dream? To be a self-sustained professional driver. Do you see yourself in any particular motorsport that you really want to focus on and you really want to be part of, and that's your goal? Of course, uh, Formula One's the ultimate goal. So I think I'd like to participate in the World Endurance Championship. What advice do you have to somebody who's thinking of pursuing karting? Uh, so uh, you'd start locally, go to your local court track, uh, uh, meet some teams, talk to them, or uh, locally source some, your own mechanic, then just buy your cart and take it to the track now, then get laps in, get some mileage, uh, become used to it, and then from there start participating in races and bringing results. Now to do that without a sponsor would require to have uh, somebody helping you out financially, uh, obviously um, a family member. Yeah, a dad, a family member. A dad, yeah. a family member, yeah. God bless your dad. Yes. <laughs> um, and and as you told us, this, this these kind of things are anywhere between two thousand to ten thousand dinars, right? So about five thousand dollars to about thirty thousand dollars a year, depending on the actual. I mean, if it's somewhere, if it's in a different country, of course there's tickets and hotels. If it's in your own country, that doesn't exist. It's basically just the cost of. So do you actually pay per race? Is it a an amount that you have to pay to partake in a race? Yeah, there's an entry fee that you pay to the organizer. But if you're if you're going for a one-time race, then that should be a per race payment uh, that you go through with the team. But if you're going for a full season, then it's a it's more of a per month basis. And 
do you is there is there any monetary value to your winnings or is it just uh, the title and the cup yeah there, there's there's no prize money uh you get the cup and uh, a ticket to the world finals which is what you're going to be doing in october yes. which is the one you're going to be winning again right because you said it here on camera you're going to be winning again we're going to have you back over here next when when you win that in Nor and to tell us about that experience yeah hopefully tell us about the go-kart that you actually drive w what makes it special Rotax kart that I drive uh, holds a 32 horsepower engine and uh, I'd say it's more it's not more of the engine power it holds but it's about the weight the weight of the kart it's very light actually uh, me and the kart together it's about 160 kilos so it's quite light and I think that's what makes it special. What's the top speed you can go in a karting? In a Rotax kart it should be about 120 kilometers. That's pretty fast considering it's just you and it's like a... Because there's nothing covering you. You're pretty much naked to the... <laughs> you're just wearing a helmet. <laughs> that really is it. Um, ha have you been in any um, unfortunate incidents or uh, accidents? Yeah, yeah, of course. I've been in plenty. I think it's... It's almost like a carried event for every for every driver to get into crashes and incidents, but that's that's what every driver needs, and that's how you learn. Tell us about the safety team and the carding uh, Bahrain carding safety system that we have. So there is about 15 marshal posts around the track. Each of them have a fire extinguisher, a marshal that's ready to help in case of any incidents. Also, there's uh, two ambulances on track at all times. Share with us some of the experiences that you've had over the past four or five years. Um, in karting that you really weren't unhappy about? Yeah, uh, the, I've been in many crashes, of course, as any other driver. But also, I've experienced some dirty driving also from other drivers. It really uh, gives you a sour taste in your mouth. So there's dirty go-karting drivers as well? I mean, I thought this thing only is in like Formula One and, and even on the roads every day, but no. even exists in karting? Yeah, yeah, for sure. How what do they do? They like bump you from behind, or they they you know? So they bump you from behind. They push you off the track a bit. Also, uh, so in karting you have a front bumper, and if what there's a mechanism called which is basically if it comes in, then you get a five second penalty, which is a lot. And how it goes in is by bumping another cart. It's a way for them to regulate if other drivers are like smashing into each other. But what some drivers do is they use it to their advantage and in front they brake check to make the court behind bumper go in to give them a penalty. I mean, don't the stewards know this? Like uh, somebody, I mean, I'm, I mean, even in normal driving, no, driving normal cars, if somebody hits you from the back, it's the person behind you that's that's in uh, that made the mistake, even if the person in front slammed the brakes. But in racing and motorsport, don't the stewards see that and see that it's actually a the person in the front that caused this accident or this penalty some stewards take it differently but most of the time it's the, it's the driver behind that would take the penalty no matter what because the regulations it states clearly if your bumper is in that's a five second penalty no matter what so there's not really any way in the regulations that you can avoid that uh, have you had any really close calls so especially in big grids out of Bahrain there's a lot of drivers which means there's a lot of incidents and many times in front of me, there's been some crash and you have to use your reflexes to quickly avoid it. When you say big grid, what are you talking about? How many? 36. 36. Wow. Yeah. Oh, there's bound to be accidents. Yeah, for sure. Have you had any serious injuries? Uh, alhamdulillah, I haven't really had serious injuries. I've had, I've had rib pain before, a bruised rib, but never anything serious. In my training, we... We incorporate reflex work also. So something we do is uh, my trainer would hold tennis balls and I put my hands on top and he drops it and then I have to catch it. Reflex. So do you have a train, is, is this a team trainer or is this a personal trainer? Personal trainer. Are you happy with your team? Yes, I'm very happy. Uh, I feel very welcomed in this team. It's like we're one big family. I think Prague are doing a very uh, big job in my opinion, we're the best team in Bahrain. This year, uh, we collected the most titles, two others including me, in the junior category and the mini category. So I'd say we're a very successful team. That's quite an achievement. Um, who's, is there an owner or is there a manager? How does that, how, how does that team work? 
Uh, so progress managed by ex-champions Mohamed Matar, Khaled Asari, uh, Osama Saad, and uh, the head mechanic Abbas Sarhan. I know some of these people, and they do have experiences. I mean, they, they, I, I know some of them that we used to work in uh, corporate jobs, and within their corporate jobs, they used to actually have a karting division as well. So I, I mean, I'm not saying that. Um, now I know why you're, you know, you're, you're, this team is creating champions. But I know that the people involved in that, they chose you or you chose them? Uh, both ways. Both ways. Because so it, it has to work both ways, right? You can't just go and say, I want to be, and they can't just say, come over. It has to, you know, it's... Yeah, because especially in karting, there's a limit of how many drivers one team can take, you know? Uh, I feel some teams, they have too many drivers, and they can't really focus on each one of them, so they don't really bring in results, because they have to focus on such a, on so many people rather than just focus on focusing on a couple few that can bring in results. Give me a few ideas of what exactly that team does to you to make you better at the sport. Yeah, so uh, we use data a lot to help, to help improve our lap times. Uh, we compare data between one driver and another to see where one driver gains uh, and one driver loses. So for example, one driver could break later, one driver could break earlier, one driver could go on the throttle earlier, the other could go on the throttle later. And those are all the things which make the difference. Can you name the team members that you have? Yeah, so uh, some of my teammates are Yusuf Al Ali, Khal Najjar, Nasr Nas, Chrissy Grantham, uh, Hazi Ghanim, Yusuf, Yusuf Al Ghaif, and Demir, Rayan Najjar also. Yusuf Al Ghaif, I don't know personally, but my son knows him. I actually know uh, quite a few, I mean, I know their fathers. Um, and uh, I, I've been tracking them as well, and, and they're getting some good results as well. They, um, I, I know some of them are actually podium results. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess you are part of a good team. Um, how important is it for a carter to be part of a good team? I mean, I know this is a silly question because I'm just looking at Formula One, and I can see some amazing drivers, but the team is or the cars are not that good. And then I see some uh, good drivers, but the cars and the teams are really good, so they're getting good results. So. Is that the same in karting? The same in a sort of way, but not truly. It, it's not as big as a difference between teams as it is in Formula One. The courts and karting are very much similar and they're within a strict set of regulations to make like a level playing field. But I would say the team does make a difference with the setup of the court, how they tune it uh, to your driving style. And I would say it's uh, very important to have a good team to back you up so that they can give you a strong court that you're comfortable with. The team has a, a mechanic? Yeah, multiple. Multiple mechanics that attend to the cart, to your cart when it needs to be attended to. Um, and let's say, you know, parts break in your in your carting. Who pays for that? So in that case, uh, your sponsor would, which is my dad. I gotta say, and I, I know I said it all that you you have an amazing dad, because uh, yeah, it's, it's not easy. T tell us about a race that you kind of never forget about. Yeah, uh, so you, usually, when you finish second place, it's it's not really that much of a good feeling because you were so close, but you missed. Third place, you're kind of happy to be there. There's one race I finished second, or I was quite happy about it. Because I believe uh, round five or six of the championship. Uh, it is a big pack in the front, about four or five drivers all fighting for the win. And then one driver kind of pushed me out, which uh, forced me to go behind. I think I was about 10th place. So I managed to fight my way back up and finish second, uh, which was ahead of both of my championship rivals. After the race, I found out I was driving with a bent chassis. And how problematic is that to the person who's listening to this and doesn't really know much about karting? Yeah, yeah a bent chassis makes a big difference. It, it makes a difference in how the kart reacts, how it turns, how responsive it, it is. and Now, it got bent during the race, you think, or when, you, when somebody bumped into you? So uh, it was... It was a double header, and the round before, uh, I th there was an incident, and that made my chassis bend. So the next race, I couldn't get a new one because you know it's a double header, back to back races. So I was forced to drive with a bent chassis. That's pretty impressive with such a chassis and such an incident dropped back in. in the, I mean, this is something I just recently saw in, in, in Formula One. <laughs> what advice do you give to someone wanting to get into karting? Yeah, so the advice I'd give them. It'd be to find a team that is really there for you, supports you, and wants the best for you. 
because they're the ones in the end of the day that are giving you the support you need, the courts, the fast courts, a good engine, a strong setup. So if you're with a team that's, uh, how can I say, that doesn't maybe support you as much, you're not going to get good material that can help you win races. So it's about finding finding the right team for you. And then from there, uh, practicing a lot, getting mileage, uh, getting to know the courts and participating in a lot of races to gain experience. Uh, now that you are, you know, the 2024 karting champion uh, in Bahrain, what advice would you give to somebody who is uh, in the karting uh, event and the races, wants to achieve what you're achieving? Uh, I'd say it's all about getting experience, uh, doing as much races as you can. So it's putting in those hours, putting in those hours. And uh, and if they're not happy with the current team that they have, can they switch midway? Is that allowed? Yeah, yeah, of course. And I, I do think you should switch teams. I've switched teams in the past because it's it's a team that's supporting you and it's a team that uh, helps you to win those races. Many people think it's in motorsport, it's, oh, this driver one is very good, is a really good driver. But mo a lot of the time, it's the team that really helped a lot. What makes karting special to you? Why do you like it? Uh, I just love the adrenaline. It's, you can't get anywhere else. Uh, it's just, it's, it's the best way to start motorsports. Uh, how how relevant is it for the person's personality to be that who is comfortable with speed and adrenaline and, and motorsport? Because there are a lot of you know people that are not interested in this um, or not comfortable with this. So um, if somebody is comfortable, they can develop that part of the skill that they lack. But they need to have a certain personality type. How how important is that? I mean, you only know if you try. So uh, once you try, you either get that you, that instant like connection you love the adrenaline and you're like oh i need to do this again i need to keep doing it or you're like oh, no it's not really my thing has there been any time throughout your uh, early career because you are still early even though you're a champion it still is an early early stage um, have you ever been in a situation where you're like well what am i doing why am i doing this i'm sick of this yeah yeah for sure a lot i mean after a bad race it really uh, is demotivating but you just have to forget it and move on to the next one. Keep pushing. So you have to be very strong in your mind as well. I mean, you can train your body. You can train. You know, you can practice and and you know make your carding perfect. But how do you make your mind, you know, capable and to endure the problems, the speed, the competition, the you know sometimes traveling abroad without without your parents and you're young. I mean, how do you train your mind? I mean, many people think it's just a physical sport like others, but like other sports, it's a very big mental game also. It can be tough on you mentally. You have to stay strong, stay dedicated and uh, disciplined. Now, in your opinion, if somebody was to sponsor you, what do they get out of it? I mean, what, what, what is it? Why would they sponsor you? Uh, they'd sponsor me to be able to participate in higher level races, which if you do win, give you very big coverage. Big exposure and big coverage. Yeah, uh, is it like Formula One? They can put their stickers on your go kart or on your helmet, or how does it, how does how does the exposure part work? You you could have it could be a, like a brand. You could have yeah, like you said, a sticker on your kart, on your helmet, on your suits. You know, exposure. Uh, then when you're on the podium, you're wearing that suit that has a sponsor on it. When you're driving in your carts, people look at you. The sponsors on it. You know. What is a misconception about karting that most people don't know about? People think it's a non-physical sport. You're just going on the pedal, going on the brake, driving, having your lovely time. But no, it's it's much more physical than people would think. Motor sport as a whole, I'd say. Uh, especially out of Bahrain, in Europe, uh, especially. There's a lot of grip on the track and that grip allows you to take the corner at a faster speed. And when you're taking corners at fast speeds, there's a lot of G-forces on your body. So when you're turning right at a fast speed, the cart goes here, but your body wants to go there. So you have to have a strong core, a strong neck to be able to sustain those G-forces. How important is weight uh, of a person uh, in, in the cart? I mean, do they balance the carts? Like if somebody's a little bit, you know, overweight and, and you're, you're, you know, you're not overweight at all. Uh, do they put weights in the, in the cart to make it, you know, uh, competitive? Yeah, of course, uh, every race, every category, it's all uh, strictly regulated. Uh, after every race, they weigh you and the court. 
and if it doesn't reach a certain minimum, which in my case is 162 with me on the court, then that's an instant disqualification. Also, if, if you're over by maybe seven kilos, that could make a big difference in the race and make you lose time. I mean, the, I know this is the entry level of motorsports, but it's no different than the professional motorsports that are, you know, the F2s and the F1s. I mean, it's just a slower car. <laughs> But the the rules and regulations and the and the procedures and the training and the methods it's it's there's no difference. It's 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 pretty much exactly the same, uh, just a a mini version of it. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree. How do you make money in karting? Is it just a it's just money spent, or is there a way of actually making money? In karting, ninety percent of the time it's just money spent. It's an investment for the for the future when you, if you get to the ranks of. F2, F1, uh, World Endurance Championship, Porsche Cup. It's more of an investment, but I think in the high, highest levels of karting, FIA uh, races, some drivers do get paid by teams to race. Would you like to see that here in Bahrain where the actual championships are actually rewarding the participants and the racers with some kind of a monetary reward? Yeah, that would be great. I think it would further boost the already uh, growing rate of drivers that we see. Because, you know, we have that in the local drag racing. Uh, the local drag racing scene, I mean, I know it's completely different than karting, but the local drag racing scene that we have, which is one of the most popular motorsports we have in Bahrain and in the region, um, there are monetary rewards to a lot of the categories that they have. But in karting, there is none. Now, is that is that a local thing or is that more of a, a, a global international thing that most karting events don't have some kind of a monetary reward? No, I'd say it's uh, it's around the world. It's uh, the the norm is not to not for there to be any prize money. While in some cases uh, in the U.S. there's prize money for races. In Saudi, there's a yearly race where the winner gets what's it, three hundred thousand dollars? What? Yes. A million. I mean, not, nothing really gets even close to that or one third of that. It's 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 really special what they did there. It's. It's, uh, you have to be Saudi to compete in it, which is the problem. So it's also to entice local talent as well. One of the fellow drivers I race against in this championship has won that also. You're kidding me? Yeah, yeah, so. And you beat him. How, how important do you think it is for you to be here and to have this kind of uh, exposure? Yeah, I think it's 100% very important, uh, especially in Bahrain. I would say that uh, the media side of courting is very underlooked. Obviously, it's a largely growing, growing sport with many new drivers joining every year. So I think we really have uh, good potential here and we need more people like you, Samir, to uh, promote these drivers and give them coverage that they need to, in order to become more su successful. What's in your opinion do you think we can do here in Bahrain um, other than the, the media coverage, which I promise you I'll be doing and I'll be trying to cover as much as as, as the karting and actually motorsport ch uh, champions or motorsports in general. Now, you know, I do that a lot for uh, drag racing. It's the first time I did it for a, a go-karter. Um, but it's not going to be the last time, I promise you. But in your opinion, what do you think we can do here in Bahrain to uh, make the sport grow more um, and hopefully not run out of racers and not run out of a generation of racers? Yeah, so I think it's uh, vital that we need to push the, the younger generations uh, to get more of them into motorsports. Parents out there thinking to get their kids, kids into motorsports. I think it's a very good idea. It teaches them discipline at a very young age. It, it teaches them how to be disciplined, uh, face, how to face challenges, how to solve them. And I think it's very important uh, for children to be a part of this because they're the future. So I think if we can just support them more and push them, uh, to race, then we can have a very bright future ahead of us. So the support comes from the parents, or the support comes from the circuit, or the support comes from the community? How, what kind of support do you think we should be given? It's, it's a mutual thing from the parents to the track, to the teams. The team should uh, look for drivers, uh, motivate them, push them to race. And I think if we do all of that, we can have some very talented young drivers coming up. You know, maybe one day I'll have your team over here or the team principals over here and talk to them and see how they can uh, extend their voice to the future generations as well. That's a very good idea. Well, I'll tell you what, when they become champions like you, 
I'll bring them in over here as well, and we'll have a one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, until then, I'm so honored that you're here, and I'm so happy for your achievement, and we're going to keep an eye on what you're going to be doing in the future. And uh, I think the future is really bright for you, uh, Muhammad. Um, and you, you make you make your family proud, you make your team proud, and you make your country also proud. And it makes people like me um, happy to have, you know, uh, fellow Bahrainis uh, at an early stage. Like I can, I'm, I'm just thinking, ten years from now, you're, you know, you're a Formula One racer. I'm gonna put hashtag, you know, 2024. Ahmed was sitting over here in Motrox TV and we were talking about him and I'm, I'm going to be doing it. You know, I'll tell you one time, uh, I met uh, Lewis Hamilton personally at an event in the UK when he just signed the Formula, before he became a professional Formula 1 driver. And uh, at that time, I mean, people knew of him, they knew that he just signed with, I believe it was McLaren at the time. Um, but, but I took a picture with him, which is somewhere over here. Yes, that one. <laughs> yeah, yes. And uh, and he was not a he was he was at that time he was not the champion the world champion that he is today, so um, I'm seeing that in front of me right now. So thank you for coming, thank you for being here, and we're gonna keep an eye on what you're gonna be doing in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. I also want to thank uh, my entire team for helping me achieve this championship. Mohammed Matar, my coach, Khalid Asai, Abbas Sarhan, uh, my mechanic and everyone in the team for helping, this, for helping making this possible. And, and well done to them because, uh, you know, it, look at the results you achieved. So well done, well done. Thank you again, Mohammed. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.